Hey guys. Just kidding. What's up guys? Mike MTG Jedi. You know I'm always full of energy, ready to go for you, and I'm excited to talk about Demon Spawn today. That's right. Yay! Let's talk about demons. <laughs> In all fairness, Demon Spawn is actually a pretty cool faction. A lot of this faction is really awesome or really not. It's like super hit or miss. But we're going to talk about each of the legendaries in detail. We're going to talk about some of the epics and some of the rares. Maybe not. But we're going to go over the champions in this faction and discuss who should you build in 2021. I'm excited for this series. I hope you are too. There's a bunch of other videos in this series, so whoever you have on your roster, I'm going to have some information for you. Make sure you hit that subscribe button and check out some of my other videos. That way you can get all of the sweet information you need on the champions in this game for 2021. Starting off, we have one of the champions that I would love the most on my account, and that is Kaimar. Okay, Kaimar has the one of the most unique cool abilities, and that is resetting the cooldowns of all ally skills, fills the turn meter of all allies except this champion by 20%. He's great for speed runs. He also has a speed in arena battles by 30%, which is a crazy awesome aura as well. And then his A2 attacks all enemies, removes all buffs, which everybody forgets about this. Why? This is incredible. Attacks all enemies, removes all buffs that they have, and puts them to sleep. 100%. 100% of the time. Then he attacks all enemies on his A1 and can place poisons. And you just have to make him do crits. But you want him to do crits because he's a hitter. So good. Such a good kit. He has good base defense. His damage is based on attack, but he has good multipliers. His kit is good. He is an always champion. So if you're not familiar with this series, we do always, sometimes, never for these champions to decide, you know, when are we going to use them? How often? How important are they? Always, sometimes, or never should we build them? And Kaimar is an always. Even if you have two, you might build a second one. Depending on how you gear him, he can be used very differently. Some people skip the accuracy altogether on him and just build him with speed and damage. Okay, uh, Some people have high accuracy to make sure he lands these debuffs. Uh, there's a lot of options with him. Any way you do it, he's really good. So he's an always for me. Tyron is also an always. He is outstanding A plus in clan boss. He has an AOE HP burn, which makes him great in spider as well as clan boss. And then you take less damage by enemies um, that are under HP burn. So it helps you survive in spider. It helps you survive in fire knight. He also has ally protection and increased defense. So that's also helping you survive. And then his A1 heals himself and deals decent damage. His A2 has really good multipliers as well. I love using this champion on my account. I even like using him in dungeons. He's in my uh, Ice Golem team right now. So he is very versatile, and he has an HP in all auras battle as well. Drexthar is an always if you don't have another HP burn. Like I do. I have Tyrant, and I actually have Ignatius as well. So... If I build Drexthar, it will probably be to do like some informational guides on him and whatnot. But he does have the provoke. The problem is it's not always 100%. It's 100% if they're under an HP burn. And he can place decrease attack. But I don't know. He's good in a, in a team that wants to go second. So maybe he would just be really good with Tormund. I don't know. He looks cool. He's like a fire elemental in armor. And then his A1 can also place HP burns. I mean, I think he's decent. They've buffed him. Um, he has accuracy in all battles, which is not bad. He's a defense-based champion with good base stats. 
you know? If you need an HP burn champion, he's an always. If you don't, he's a sometimes. Sometimes you still want to build him, I think. But I haven't decided whether I'm going to build him or not. Here we are at my very first legendary, which was a super huge disappointment. Now, when you're watching this is after he's been buffed. And everybody knows he is very good now. A lot of people run him with Duchess so that she veils him and then he does a pile of damage. He also can veil himself with either his passive whenever they increase their turn meter or whenever he uses this ability to add an increased attack, increased crit damage, increased speed to himself. But both of his abilities smack with those tentacles very hard. He will hit you with the tentacles and you will die or he will cut you twice. Either way, he is a very good champion. His uh, aura never comes up because he is not in the lead in Arena. But I run him in one of my 3v3 teams. I run him on a go second team with Tormin, uh, Sandlash, Survivor, and... Oh, Madness Harris to strip the buffs. So he is very good. He is a very, very good nuker now, but he is kind of hard to get to work. You need other champions to pair with him in order to make him work well. He does not work well on his own still, but he got me through a lot of content in the game, and now he's even better than that. So his multipliers are good. Um, he is an always. I would say you should always build him if you have him, and he looks cool too. More to Macabre. I think this guy is super good, but he's definitely a sometimes. Um, his passive has a 20% chance to unlock secret skill peril for one turn when attacked. And he also has a 20% chance to fill his turn meter by 25%. And when he attacks with his secret skill, he kills people. Attacks one enemy two times. Ignores shield, block damage, and defense, and enemies killed by the skill cannot be revived. He is super annoying to fight against in, like, Doom Tower. But I think he could also be good in Arena. It's just, like, how do you keep him alive? I mean, he has 23,000 HP. Anyway, attacks all enemies. 90% chance of placing block buffs. Um, If they are under a heal reduction, it can't be resisted. I don't think that's going to happen, but it does book to 100%. He, he does have the heal reduction on his A1, but again, you're probably going to do the A2 before you do the A1. So I like this guy. If I got him, I'd probably build him to try him, but he's definitely a sometimes for sure. Lord Shazar is a sometimes as well. He has a sweet speed aura, but a lot of people just run him at 50 and don't ever put him to 60. I like this bomb champion. I think that he is good. He deals good damage. He has good stats. I would build him if I had him. I think a lot of people would, but I'm going to say he's a maybe. But like um, <laughs> Captain Nipple Ring over here, he is very good for this aura. If he didn't have this aura, probably no one would ever talk about him. I, I don't think. But he's got a sweet sword as well. He hits smacks pretty hard. He's a sometimes, but he is good. Duchess is one of the best champions in the game. If you have her, you're always going to build her. If you have more than one, you're probably going to build more than one, and we're all going to hate you. Uh, speed in all battles by 19% is fine. The passive <sighs> decreases the damage taken by all allies from AoE attacks by 25%. Boss is 15% most annoying and then paired with this veil buff continuous heal revive uh, it's so frustrating increase attack block debuffs perfect veil i mean like this is the definition of a defensive champion right here attacks one enemy two times places a shield on her equal to 10% of her max HP. So you just like build her up with tons of max HP so that every time she hits, she's shielding herself. I mean, come on, we know she's good. She's ridiculous. 
I hate fighting against her. You do too. But if you have her, you'll build her and use her just like everyone else will. So, Katraxa, I think, is an always. It's close. Like, she has a four hitter on her A1 that ignores 50% of defense. How can you skip that? Like, she's insane in Fire Knight because of this. She's really good in the arena. Attacks one enemy, 75% chance of placing weaken and removing two random buffs and gets an extra turn. I don't know if I would ever build her with accuracy, guys. I don't know. And then she has a revive on death, which I'll be honest, is terrible. It's really bad because here's why. So let's say that you kill her and then she revives herself. Then what happens? She doesn't have a turn meter, and then you kill her again before she gets a turn. So I find her passive, is it a passive? Yeah, I guess it's a passive. I find her passive to be not good, not good. Now, if I built her, I would build her with as much resistance as I could fit in so that people can't remove that buff. I would also consider putting gear on her, uh, like Untouchable or, you know, that new gear from the Scarab boss or, you know, the immunity gear that we already have. I would consider building her in that. Um, but again, those buffs can be stripped as well. So maybe just resistance gear. Like if you have good resistance gear that has good crit rate or crit damage or something, I would consider putting that on her so that she can't have this buff removed. Because if this buff can't be removed, then she's really good, okay? So building her with resistance, I think, is key, and she does start with 40 resistance. Attack in all battles is fine, but number one, she deals a lot of damage. Number two, she also attacks four times, which is super relevant. There's no other A1 that attacks four times in the game, as far as I'm aware. Uh, and then it's like she attacks six times, though, because when she does this, then she gets an extra turn. I think she's got to be an always, guys. If, if Tell me in the comments, do you have her in your vault? If you have this champion, is she in your vault, or do you use her? That's my question. I think I would build her. She looks like she's uh, from Aliens, the movie series. But um, I would build her if I had her. I I think she's super cool. And Neathwe is an always, and you can fight me about it in the comments. He gets so much hate, guys. So much hate. They're like, oh, he's a mediocre nuker. And, uh, you know, he's like second tier nuker. Not very good. Baloney. Bull crap. He is a top tier nuker in the game. This death axe is going to slice you in half. He kills Rodos every time. He kills Seafi and Duchess. He puts the block revives on everyone. This is an A plus tier. Always build nuker. Always. Always. Stop saying otherwise. Attacks all enemies. Ignore the leech. Do not put accuracy on him. Attacks all enemies, and then they die. A2. Attacks one enemy three times, and the damage e increases with each hit. So let's say like the first hit does 10,000. Then the second hit will do 12, and the third one will do 15. Okay? It'll go up each time. And this hit kills Rodos every time, even with shields most of the time. That's one of the reasons why I love him, because I hate Rodos. And then this one, a decrease max HP, can be good against the Scarab. It is also good against all the stupid healers, like, <laughs> like Duchess, for example, or Sifi, or anyone like that. And it also hits hard. So what are we doing? Heals this champion by 30% of their max HP each time they kill an enemy. He heals himself too. Enemies killed by this champion cannot be revived. Why are you saying he's a tier two nuker? Why are you saying he's not that good? He is the best nuker on my account. And I have Ethos, Kandrafon, like I have a lot of good nukers on my account. He's the best one. 
Put him in Savage if you have it. Otherwise, just put him in awesome crit damage, crit rate gear. Like, he is incredible. And I love him. Moving on. Is he the last legendary? He is. So that is all the legendaries. Almost all of these are always builds. Drek Drekstar is a maybe. Um, Mortu is a maybe. And Shazar is a maybe, probably. But the legendaries in this faction are really solid really solid the epics are hit or miss they're hit or miss allure is an always for me this a1 attacks three times but if it's a boss it's the same target and then decreases the turn meter on each hit as long as you're you know as long as you have around 100 percent crit actually the first team that i used to clear fire knight 20 on auto used her while she was at 50 and I did an account takeover where I also used her at 40 to beat Spider 20. No, not Spider 20. Fire Knight 20. Granted, okay, yes, it took 20 minutes because she was at 40 and the champions were not that leveled. But, like, she is that good. Um, her A2 is very cool as well. Her A3 is very cool as well. But this is the point of her kit, and her AI is really good. It's really on point. Sometimes you need the accuracy, but usually not in faction crypts. And she's good against the faction war bosses as well. If you have her, you should build her, period, end of story. Uh, Excruciator, don't build her. She's bad. Akoth the Seared, I think is a sometimes okay he has decreased crit rate 20 such a low chance of placing hp burn but uh it increases by 20 percent for each alive enemy so i guess that's 100 percent if you need an hp burn champion he could be your dude but it's gonna take a long time to get him from the doom tower uh burn and shield um and the cool thing is he has like that companion rian the conjurer and then his passive is pretty good as well. Um, HP in all battles. The problem is you're probably going to have an HP burn champion by the time you get him. But he is cool. So I'm going to say sometimes. But like if you built him, it would probably still be a good idea. Uh, Uranus. Terrible. Don't build her. Soul Drinker. I wish he was good. Places two bombs when he dies. The problem is they do half the damage that they're supposed to or less. And it's not worth it. The rest of his kit deals with bombs also. It's not good. No, don't build him. Nazana is fine for faction wars, but I wouldn't put her past 50, so I'm going to say never. Infernal Baroness is fine if you're putting her in a stun set or something. Um, this, Unless you have Duchess, you really need healers, and she can do a little bit. But only put her to 50. She's a never. Tanix, some people think she's okay. I think she's a never. She has like decreased speed, more decreased speed, and she kind of heals, but then she takes a lot of damage. I did not like her one bit. I tried her at 50 in Faction Wars, and she was not good. So I would never build her. This new guy, everybody seems to like him. I think it's a him. Uh, with the uh, the freeze and the HP burn, block debuffs and strengthen. Um, again, freeze and HP burn. And then the healing and turn meter stuff. I don't know. I think this guy is questionable. I think it's a sometimes, maybe, probably not. There's probably better champions that do this. I'm not going to be building him, but he does look very interesting. Hellgazer, never. Paidma, sometimes. Her A1 can do a decrease attack, which could be good for clan boss. She's a defense-based champion. So if you need a decrease attack in clan boss, she can be good. The problem is I don't, she doesn't do anything else to help you in clan boss. Her A2 is decreased accuracy, and her A3 removes buffs. I guess the clan boss um, does put buffs on itself take increased attack off i mean that's not nothing she's good she deals decent damage she's a sometimes if you need decreased attack she's a sometimes and then i would say umbral enchantress is an always 
She's really good in Arena because she has an AoE Provoke with Unkillable. If you do this skill first, then she cools down herself and can't do this, but it's okay, you know? She can do this and place block buffs, which is also good, but if they're provoked, then they can't put the buffs up anyway. Uh, and then her A1, the more damage she loses, the more damage she does. She does do a decent amount of damage, but she cannot be your nuker. She's not going to do enough to be your nuker. You want her to have high accuracy and do some damage, right? Like, I've even run her with crit damage gloves and then still a high enough accuracy to be relevant, like 250 or something. But even then, you know, you still want uh, somebody else to really be your damage dealer. But she's, an, she's a super big carry in tons of content in this game. She's really good in Faction Wars. She's really good in the Doom Tower. She can help you out in dungeons if you need her to, in Arena. She's real good. And then all the rest of the champions in the faction are nevers. Okay, I take that back. Never. Maybe you want to say sometimes for Diabolist. She has an increased speed. Uh, she fills the turn meter. But, like, you're going to get High Katoon. Why would you build her over High Katoon? I don't know. Maybe if I start a new account, I'll try building her over High Katoon and see how it goes. But she's squishy. She's squishy, 782 defense, so keep that in mind if you're going to build her. No, never, 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 never. And then actually Fellhound is good. Okay, Fellhound is good. A lot of people will build Fellhound. I want to say sometimes, but a lot of people will build Fellhound at the, in the early game. Number one, he has an attack on his A1 all enemies. Ignore the decreased speed, not important. Don't build him with accuracy. He can do the campaign. He can beat all of the stages in the campaign with one hit here if you build him with enough damage. The problem is, in like Faction Wars, he'll go back between these other things. The block damage buff on one ally, and it seems random with who he does it to. And then this is actually good for Fire Knight. He helped me um, to do well in Fire Knight as well, him plus a lore, to continuous heal and the reflect damage buff on all allies for two turns. Um, plus he's a rare, and I mean, he is survivable. He has reasonable base defense and HP. I put him in a sleep set because I had a decent set of sleep gear. I still only have one decent set of sleep gear, and it's still on him. But he did help me. He was in my 21 clear Faction Wars team. He does provide some crowd control in addition to Umbral Enchantress. And then the healing is very useful, because actually this faction has a hard time healing people. Unless you have Duchess, it's like, who's going to who's gonna do the heals for you? Um, so... That's the faction, guys. That's the faction. Most of the legendaries are really good. We have a few standout epics. And that's all she wrote. We could use some love for Demon Spawn. Especially rares. Like, there's so few rares in comparison. Um, we could definitely get some more. But that'll do it for this video. Those are all of the champions in Demon Spawn that you should consider building in 2021. What do you agree with? What do you disagree with? Tell me in the comments. Hit that sub button. Thank you for watching. And go check out another video. We'll see you later, guys.